The fats you eat are either saturated or unsaturated. In this video, I'll explain the difference, tell you the foods that contain each type, and share which fats I use in my kitchen. The fats that you eat contain fatty acids, which are basically a string of carbons with hydrogen atoms around them and a compound at one end called a carboxyl group, which is what makes it an acid and is why we call them fatty acids. What makes a fatty acid saturated or unsaturated is determined by how the carbon atoms are bonded together. So saturated fat, fatty acids um, have just single bonds between the carbons, whereas unsaturated fatty acids have one or more double bonds. If there are at least two double bonds, it's a polyunsaturated fat. If there's just one, it is a monounsaturated fat. So I'm going through this chemistry for a reason, and that reason is that these single and double bonds have some significance when it comes to the physical properties of the fat and whether or not we can safely use the fat in our diet. Um, if we look back at the saturated fat, we see that it only contains single bonds between the carbon atoms. That makes this molecule nice and straight, so saturated fats can fit together with their neighboring fatty acid closely, and that gives us solid fats. Um, a perfect example is this stick of butter, which is mostly saturated fat. Saturated fat is also found in animal products like eggs and full fat dairy. Uh, it's also found in red meat, as well as tropical oils, which would be our coconut oil and palm oil. When we look at an unsaturated fatty molecule, we see that the double bonds cause the molecule to bend or kink. Unsaturated fats, therefore, don't fit together very snugly, and what we get is an oil or a liquid fat, like olive oil or avocado oil, which are mostly monounsaturated fats, or we get a vegetable oil like soybean oil, corn oil, canola oil, that is mostly polyunsaturated fatty acids. Those double bonds in the unsaturated fats also expose a vulnerability, and they make vegetable oils unstable when exposed to heat or air. And this is why I don't recommend using polyunsaturated vegetable oils uh, really in any capacity, especially for cooking. Uh, and I talk more about that in a different video that I will link to if you'd like more information on that. Uh, I will say that I will use monounsaturated oils for non-cooking purposes like salad dressing, but I personally don't use olive oil for cooking because it has a lower smoke point than avocado oil, which is an oil that I feel comfortable using for cooking. So let's look a bit more into why saturated fats are more stable than unsaturated fats. If you look at the carbon atom of a saturated fat, the first thing you notice is that it has uh, four arms, right, four hands. Uh, two of those hands are attached to hydrogen atoms, and two are shaking hands with neighboring carbons. In other words, the carbon bonds in a saturated fatty acid are saturated. There's no available bond that is free to grab onto a new atom. So these molecules um, are not going to react with things like hydrogen and oxygen atoms. Uh, but if we look at the carbon atoms of an unsaturated fat, we see that some of the carbons have double handshakes going on. In other words, they are double bonded to each other. So that's awkward, right? You don't walk up to someone on the street and shake both of their, their hands. So those double bonded carbons are unstable and they're looking for an oxygen or a hydrogen atom to grab hold of. That is not what you want to happen. Uh, for instance, because Vegetable oils oxidize very easily. They produce oxidation products like free radicals, which damage your cells. The unsaturated fats can also be exposed to hydrogen in a lab setting through a process called hydrogenation. And this is the process that allows food manufacturers to turn a liquid vegetable oil into a solid like Crisco or margarine. Uh, the unfortunate side effect of hydrogenation is that it creates trans fats, which are, which are uh, certainly a well-documented uh, health hazard. So am I saying that saturated fats are healthier than vegetable oils? 
Well, I think there has been a lot more research recently that shows that vegetable oils are certainly not what we want to be using in fast food fryers or, or really cooking uh, for in any capacity for that matter because of the way they react to heat. Uh, monounsaturated fats only contain one double bond and are therefore more stable than polyunsaturated when exposed to heat or air, but nothing compares to the stability of saturated fats. Uh, I will tell you that in preparation for this video, I read Nina Teichel's book, The Big Fat Surprise. It is an excellent book that I highly recommend. She meticulously researched it and explains in very clear language how we have been misguided into thinking that vegetable oils are healthier than saturated fats. Um, also, in preparation for this video, I spoke with my 99-year-old grandmother and I asked her what fats she cooked with when she was young. And her answer was that she started her married life using lard and then switched to good old butter, uh, both of which, of course, contain a lot of saturated fats. And while I'm not saying that eating saturated fats will guarantee that you will be mentally sharp and healthy at 99 years of age, it could point to the fact that saturated fats might not be the health menace we've thought them to be. And I will end by saying that my husband and I never use vegetable oils in our home, uh, but we often cook with butter and coconut oil. Uh, we also have a daughter who is recently married and plans on starting a family at some point, and we encourage her to avoid vegetable oils and not be afraid of saturated fats. So I will leave on that thought uh, I hope this was helpful. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I will be back real soon with another video to help you reach your goal. Thanks.